In this video, we are going to show you how to get the best campgrounds in the best locations, all with a little bit of planning. Plus, we're gonna help you know exactly how much that your trip is going to cost you before that you even hit the road and give you a free resource that we use in planning all of our travels. So stay tuned. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. We are going to give you some very easy steps to be able to make trip plans like a pro. So let's get started. Step number one, you're going to want to download the free template that we've provided. Now, this is the exact template that I have used for the past three years to be able to secure our campsites and excursions in all the best locations. So let's go ahead and download that now. We're going to want to go ahead and go to our website at gratefulglamper.com forward slash planner. From here, you're going to enter your name, and your email and click get template now. From there, you're going to download the trip planner template and then click use template. Now that you have your trip planning template, we're going to use this in the next step. So hold tight here and we'll go on to the next step. Step two, you're going to want to go to rvparky.com and either use an account if you have one or set up a free account. So let's go ahead and go to RV Parky and set up our account. So once that you're here at RV Parky and you've created your account or logged into an existing account, you can go to your dashboard. Once you've gone to your dashboard, you have an option if you have any previous saved trips in here to modify those or to start a new trip. So let's go ahead and do trips. And we're going to come over here and click new trip and start a new trip. So go ahead and put the name of your trip. I'm just going to call this one summer of 2021. You can choose the date that you want to leave. For example, I'm going to say we're going to leave on May the 15th. Where are you starting from? I'm just going to say that we're going to be leaving from Orlando, Florida. And then who can view this trip? Now, this is a great option because using this drop down and choosing friends who I give the URL enables you can copy the link and give it to any friends or family to be able to let them know where you're going and when you're going to be there. This is a great option for people that want to caravan or if you want to be able to see any friends or family along your trip route. The next thing you're going to do is put in what you think that the average price per gallon of fuel is going to be. I have $3 because we drive a diesel and I'm just guessing probably around that price range. I would rather overestimate versus underestimate and click OK. So we know we're going to leave from Orlando, Florida. What I can do is I can actually zoom out the map if I want and look at all of the places that we want to go. I'm going to say that I'd like to go to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So I'm going to click add stop and type in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina and click enter. So it's telling me that from Orlando, Florida to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is a seven hour, 27 minute drive and it's approximately 498 miles. That's quite the haul to drive in one day. So I think that what we should do is make a pit stop somewhere along the way. It looks like maybe Savannah, Georgia might be a fun place to go. So let's go ahead and we're going to click in that we're going to make a stop in Savannah, Georgia. This looks much more doable. It's four hours from Orlando to Savannah, and then it's another three hours and 41 minutes to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It tells me that it's approximately 505 miles and that my fuel, if I get seven miles to the gallon with our big old diesel pusher, is going to cost me approximately $216. You're going to add each stop in for your trip 
and then each stop on your return trip as well until that you have your trip laid out with the dates. Here you can say that you want to spend, let's do two nights in Savannah, and I want to spend some time exploring Myrtle Beach, so we're gonna stay there for five nights. I could also click return here if I knew that this was going to be the extent of my trip, or I could add more stops in. And since this is just an example, we're going to go ahead and leave this as it is and go on to the next step. Here's another tip. Stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna show you how to get reservations at those highly coveted national park campgrounds. So I'll give you that tidbit towards the end of the video. Now that we've got our trip laid out in RV Parky and we know the anchor points that we want to visit, we're going to take the dates and locations from RV Parky and load them into our trip planning sheet. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now we're going to go ahead and take our trip dates and locations from RV Parky and transfer them over to our planning sheet. So one easy way to do this is to simply copy and paste the information. So I'm going to copy these dates and paste them here. And then I can just type in my location here of Savannah, Georgia. We're going to look at RV parks and whether or not we've made reservations in future steps. But for now, go ahead and come and copy and paste your location and your dates into the trip planning sheet. Step number four. Now that you know where you want to go and when you want to go there, we need to start making these reservations. So we're going to use the internet to look for campgrounds in the areas that you're going to want to visit. Now, remember, state parks, there are Corps of Engineer campgrounds, sometimes even fairgrounds, lots of options to choose from to reserve your campsites. So make sure that you're including these as you're looking in your search. Using RV Parky is also a great way to look at potential campgrounds within a given geographical area as well. So let's go ahead and get those reservations made and then we're going to enter them into the template. So here's the inside tip that I promised you about being able to book those coveted national park campsites. If you go to recreation.gov to book a reservation, the campsites you can book are six months in advance but here's where the inside tip comes in, as told to me by a recreation.gov employee. What you can do is you can actually book up to a week in advance of when you want to be there. So here's how this would look. Let's say you want to book a campsite in Zion National Park starting on June the 1st. You can actually go ahead and book that starting in May book it through the time that you want to leave, but be able to get that in in advance. Then, after the window has passed, you can change that reservation and drop off that week that you really don't need, which opens it up for somebody else. What this does is it helps you to secure that campsite well in advance versus waiting the day of that six month window when that campsite could already be taken. Now that we've got some dates put into our planning sheet, we're going to start reaching out to make reservation. Now this was our itinerary from last year. So you can see I have the dates and I have the locations that we're going to be. You want to start making your reservations and then once that you make those reservations for the places that you want to go, you can come enter the RV park that you're going to stay at or that you want to stay at and check if you do have that reservation made, add any notes in about a reservation number, and then if you've paid any sort of deposit. So I'm going to say we paid a one night deposit of $50, and that our remaining costs for this particular campground is going to be $150. So you can see here, it showed me that I have $50 out in deposits right now in that I still need to plan for another $150 in costs for this particular trip. Any must do things that I want to do in Savannah, such as restaurants, see the downtown area, I can put in here to make sure that we do what we want. 
Excursions is where I can put anything that we want to book and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes so make sure that you stay tuned. But for now, go ahead and start making some phone calls and get those reservations in. Another great way to look for places to stay in a specific area is to come back to RV Parky and you can click find a place to stay. When you click find a place to stay, it's going to give you some options within a geographical area. Now, some of these options, such as the Walmart, may or may not allow overnight stays. And most of the time, there will be some sort of review from a previous user that gives you information about that campground or about that possible place to stay. This is also a great way to learn about campgrounds that maybe you don't know about or have not made it to the Google listing just yet. So as we're adding these these reservations into the template, we also are going to be putting the costs into the template as well. This is a great way to be able to track exactly how much that your lodging is going to cost you in these campgrounds. We've given you a column to put both the deposit and also any balance due. Now, some campgrounds in highly popular areas do require that you pay in full up front. If that's the case, we're just going to still enter that whole entire amount in the deposit column and put a zero in the other column. This is because this is going to help you keep track of what you've already paid for out of pocket before your trip even begins. Step number five. You want to look for the things that you want to go do or see within a particular given area. Now this is where utilizing Facebook groups is a great thing to do. You can also check out some of our other videos on things that we've done or seen within certain geographical areas. And if there's any must eat at restaurants or things that you want to make sure that you take advantage of while you're in a specific area, then you want to make sure that you add those in. Atlas Obscura is another great resource to be able to see if there's anything that's maybe just an off the beaten path type of thing that you wanna check out within a geographical area. A lot of times we found out early in our travels that we missed seeing stuff and then as we'd be swapping travel stories with other RVers at the campground, they'd be like, oh, did you visit this place or that place? And we'd be like, no. How did you even know that that was there? So using resources like Atlas Obscura or even the Offbeat Attractions app is a great way to maybe find those little unique hidden gems that are within different geographical locations and make sure that you add them to your trip planning sheet so that you don't miss out while you're in that area. So in this step, we're going to put down some of the excursions or the activities that we know we want to do and things to see in the Savannah. So I'm going to put that we want to definitely go check out the Worm Slow Plantation. I have found out that this is a great place to visit and so I want to make sure that we go there. I know that there's a fee associated with this, so I'm going to put this under activity costs. I also found out that there's a great trolley that goes down town Savannah and so we want to make sure that we take advantage of this. So I'm going to put that here and I've made the reservation number, so I'm going to make myself a note that I have that reservation made and ready to go. One thing that we like to do is if there is a particular church or house of worship in an area that we want to visit, I will put that information here as well. I found out that there are some great cathedrals in the area. So I'm going to make myself a note that we probably want to check those out while we're in Savannah as well. Step number six. You need to make reservations in advance when you want to book excursions. Now, there are some things that are very hard to get in if you don't have an advance reservation. Places like Antelope Canyon in Page, Arizona, or taking the ferry out to Fort Jefferson and the Dry Tortugas in Key West, or maybe booking that whale watching tour or that kayaking tour. You're going to find that certain things that are more popular than others require advanced reservations. So this is a great time as you're planning out your trip to also make sure that you're getting those reservations in for those excursions or those tours that you want to take. So let's take a minute and go ahead and add that into our trip planning sheet now. And as well as being able to document reservation numbers or what the costs are going to be for those types of excursions or tours as well. So we're going to go ahead and look at this example sheet 
of our trip all planned out and mostly ready to go. Under this excursions tab is where again, I can put anything that's going to maybe cost us some extra money. Since I'm still working on planning this trip out and don't quite have everything booked yet and I have a good idea of things we want to do, this is a work in process. Once that I know exactly how much that this excursion is going to cost and have a reservation made, I'll add that over into my activity costs column and enter the information under the excursions column. This is a great way to be able to see all of your costs at a glance and know where you're going and where you're going to stay. All right, so you are ready to hit the road. You've got your campgrounds booked, all your excursions booked as well, and you are ready to hit the road. So it's time to go out there and enjoy the journey, knowing that you're going to always have a place to stay while you're out there, plus you're gonna be able to take advantage of those things that you want to see and be able to experience those must-see places or those must-do tours. So thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Also, we'd love to hear in the comments from you. Do you have any trip planning done? Are you one that likes to plan your trips or are you more of a fly by the seat of your pants? <laughs> are you the planner? or the fly by the seat of the Europeans. <laughs> it's a good thing that we have kind of one of each of us in this particular relationship, but we would love to hear more about what your travel style is. Also, make sure that you check out last week's video where we explain why the fly by the seat of your pants travel style might not work as well in 2021 as it used to. So make sure that you go check out last week's video as well. You're excited. Yeah. Woohoo! Hello, I'm Ben. No, no, we don't do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can I launch my rocket? No, Not right now.